Hello and welcome back to the Puncher's Chance podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Liam Davis versus Shabazz Massoud and the rest of that Queensbury card in Birmingham. As well as that, we'll talk on a couple of the other fights around the world. Robson Conte-Chow versus Oshaki Foster, Gabriella Fandora defending her belts, etc, etc. Jump straight into it. Liam Davis, Shabazz Massoud, big fight. There was a, there was a lot of controversy, a lot of hate, animosity between the two of them. But it turned into a pretty good fight in the end. Yeah, the scorecards definitely didn't do Masood any justice. But I'm a big fan of Liam Davis. But he was beaten comfortably Saturday night. And I don't think many people saw it come in. I don't think any of us predicted uh, Masood to win. But yeah, r- really impressive when he leapfrogs him now. And uh, looks like, well, he's got a world title now. But could set up some other big fights in 2025 the way he started he started like oh, it was incredible and for me I thought Liam Davis didn't get off to the best of starts and then I thought oh get back into it Masood may tire but Masood just seemed to get better and better as the fight went on and like Ben said now he's put himself right up there now after winning this fight he's gone from fighting a journeyman in his last fight to now potentially fighting one of the pound for pound greats it's an it's incredible but like you said, there was a lot of back and forths in the build. At what was quite nice at the end, Liam Davis was there congratulating him. Well done, mate. You deserve to win. But when that scorecard one fifteen one thirteen was read out, and I heard split, and he said Liam and Thomas Driver said Liam Davis, I thought to myself, no. Yeah, no. for a moment it was like, no, surely not. Like Come, I know it's boxing, and and I was thinking, and then the other scorecards and then Terry O'Connor probably had like the the best scorecard out of all of them and that's never happened in the past he's normally the one that gives it the opposite way but yeah at least the right man won but they need to look into that scorecard I think that judge you know they should be asking him why did he score it that way but yeah there needs to be some sort of repercussions mm. for something like that they sort they, they we sort of just forget like just let them get away with it and then move on and it's like well Maybe at some point we should start questioning. But to, to kind of not to distract that mm. part of it away from what, well, like you guys have said, a phenomenal performance from Masood. Really sharp, um, on the back foot, really comfortable on the back foot, up against the ropes. He seemed happy to be in the corner, kept spinning Liam Davis in the corner. To be honest, I thought Liam Davis was lucky to escape without a points deduction as well for the hit in the back of the head. How I think many warnings? He, I think there was three yeah. final warnings, and he's like, "One more, and you're getting a points deduction." The next one, one more, and you're getting. It's like, well, you kind of lose it if you don't actually uh, follow through on that. But yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about Ben Davison. He gets a lot of credit when they when his fighters do well. He gets a lot of hate when his fighters don't do so well. Obviously, AJ most recently, but. Really, they got it right, and Shabazz Massoud did everything he had to do to, to put that plan into place. He had a really easy night, didn't he, Ben Davidson? He, he didn't have to really do anything in the corner. Massoud was doing everything right, putting Davis on the back foot. And like you said, all those warnings, I'm not being funny, but how come there was no points deduction? Well, I mean, the referee was probably Team Davis, but <laughs> listen, at least, like we said, the right man won. Let's not focus on that too much. Massoud now is the IBO world champion. The next steps now for him where does he go does he fight does he then take that massive step up then and fight a new way you know people are calling for Connor Walker the winner of Connor Walker against Lewis Crocker I mean that's a great fight Um, but yeah listen it's a great performance and um, yeah yeah I think I think Davis just got too hung up on trying to get that one big shot didn't he and like like you know he's got power like punch power and can get stoppage wins but the further, like the more rounds that ticked over, it was just getting more to desperation, and Masood was just picking up the rounds comfortably in the end. I like, in terms of going forward, probably looking more likely at the winner of Dennis McCann and Peter McGrail in That's the fight. December. I think. Crocker, yeah. I think Masood as the winner of that, and Davis as the loser of that is probably the easiest way to do it, but. If he could somehow get that fight with a new way, it'd be massive. And obviously, Queensbury have got two big fighters from our area now in Nathan Heaney and Masood, who are both big ticket sellers. Obviously, you've got a big fan base. So, if they could, like, if they're ever going to have a chance to get a big fight in Stoke, it'd be getting them to on a card with each other. Yeah. And you never know, we could try and get Frank Warren to push uh, Naya in a way to 
fight in Stoke. I'd, I'd love for it to happen. <laughs> On a Tuesday just, night as well. That'd yeah, be a brilliant yeah, cold one, rainy yeah. night in Stoke. Yeah. It's just you think like he doesn't really fight outside of Japan much. It's like, oh, Imagine. We're finally getting a new way outside of Japan <laughs> and he's in he's in Stoke. I it would be something. He's fought out of Japan, but he's like fought in Glasgow. Yeah, he yeah, fought yeah, in, yeah, Josh in a Super Series. Josh Fight, Taylor yeah. card, didn't he? Yeah. So maybe he's a fan of uh, Scotland. questionably nice British towns. Yeah. Um, Stoke, he's a Rory, Rory he's Delap super fan there. He is, yeah, yeah. Ryan Shawcross, he's got posters <laughs> all over his wall. He's a big fan. But um, no, I think the thing that surprised me most is it had that feeling of a fight where you're like, oh, well, defensive fire, back foot fire, looks really sharp. He's going to tire. Mm. The big puncher will come back into the fight and then it will kind of set a light. But actually, Masood found the chin of Davis so often during that fight you know I think double figures he found that left hand and I think I can only think of one punch that Davis landed on Masood flush to the chin and it's just you, you think you can be a big puncher you can be this but if you're not landing anything then then you're not you're not ever going to hurt anyone and Matchroom have now got another win over back Queensbury back. I think that's now three wins on the trot for them yeah. now um so that's interesting as well because I think there's talks of them having another 5v5 so I think the 5v5 has been delayed I think Frank Ronald oh, was saying okay. so it's not going to be in February he said it's still going to be a great card but it's not going to be in February um, so I don't know if, if another fight has mm. found they found a fight that they want to put on that card and so it doesn't make yeah, sense it was meant to be AG Dubois rematch which, is in, which also isn't, isn't happening one. yet and I suppose what we didn't mention um, actually we'll get on to it after you um, the, the, we talked about all the fights but the, obviously the zone now working with Queensbury will be a, really an interesting um, mix up so elsewhere on that card just as we're looking down at it obviously Chantel Cameron picked up a pretty confident um, victory comfortable without being overly sort of uh, adventurous or flashy obviously she'll have an eye on, on, on next weekend or the weekend after next um, for Amanda Serrano Katie Taylor is that the fight to make yeah. the winner of that I think that's the fight out there I want to like whitewash win on the weekend against the uh, another former world champion you know how good Cameron is and I think she obviously still holds a slight grudge with Katie Taylor and everything that went on with Matchroom and to get that trilogy fight would be really good but obviously it depends on how Katie Taylor gets off against Serrano and you could end up with a Chantel Cameron and Serrano fight so yeah I think that's more than likely what she'll be keeping an eye on and what she'll want to push towards I think I think that Katie Taylor fight makes sense because it's 1-1 one, one yeah let, let him do it and next weekend the main event that's a brilliant fight in it Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano um, the first fight was so good I can't wait for the second fight but Chantal Cameron if I was her management I'd be getting her ringside getting her in that ring and facing off saying this is 1-1 if it is Katie Taylor that comes through because it's a very tough fight to call but Amanda Serrano is could cause her an upset but yeah Chantal Cameron brilliant performance Saturday night and surely the re the trilogy with Katie Taylor's next potentially Sandy Ryan as well you could mm. put her name into the mix but who knows who knows I think for me the ideal scenario is Katie Taylor beats Serrano Katie Taylor Chantel Cameron Amanda Serrano Sky Nicholson Ooh. tie it all up um, doesn't necessarily have to be on the same card I don't think it would be it would be great to have that as kind of like a like a double um, main event header for two two female massive fights passing the torch moment sort of thing but you know we'll have to wait and see but you know, I, there's not too much to talk about this fight because it just was quite comfortable yeah. um, for Chantel Cameron she looked very focused beforehand I think they did an interview backstage and mm -hmm. she didn't she didn't seem particularly interested to be doing it um, beforehand just seemed very focused get that win and then focus on what's next whether that be um, whether that be all we said last week, maybe just stick Terry Harper up another weight. You know, she's done it before. She's done it again. Why I'm not? sure she can. Four, I think be, that would be a four-weight world champion then um, if she could do it. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, possible fight of the year contender, oh. Echo Esman versus Ben Vaughan. I, I couldn't believe that fight watching it. After the first round, I was like, this one's not lasting another two rounds at best. The body of Vaughan was smashed up. You could see the markings up, the blood... But they both just stuck in there, didn't they? Great fight. I Well, I'm not being funny. Echo Esman in, in his last fight against Owen Cooper had to come off the canvas and win and win in probably the best knockout of the year, like I've said. But this fight Saturday night, wow. Both of the, I know this is going to sound stupid, but both men won. Because Echo yeah. Esman can now move up again and Ben Vaughan, his stock has risen and he can now take on another challenge because 
how the hell that fight went the distance, I don't know. I thought it was going to get stopped within eight rounds for either man at the time as well, because both men were in it and he was very competitive. But yeah, Echo Esman looked good. He looked on it and now he can be looking at the top end of, Brit- of the British boxing level and he could pr- definitely put himself back into that side of things in 2025. But for me, I want to see more of Ben Vaughan because he showed a lot of heart and a lot of determination. It was his debut, I want to say, on a big, big TV channel like TNT. So to do that on your debut, fair play to him. Yeah, I was really impressed with him, like, considering he hadn't gone past six rounds in any of his other fights and to stick it out for the ten rounds of that pace. Mm. I think it's just a shame, like, Essman obviously nicknamed the engine. It's one fight that you don't want to come up against in terms of trying to outwork him, but you give it a good go. I actually thought Vaughn did outwork Essman. I think Essman just almost picked his shots a little bit better and that's what yeah. won him the fight for me yeah. which is crazy to say like say he hasn't gone the distance or hasn't gone even past six rounds off the, against the engine the man who's known for doing this fights him at his own game and probably outworks him over the 12 mm. but obviously not enough yeah I, th- I think Vaughn if he was to do that against a lot of other fighters around that sort of level he'd cause him issues so I think you'd definitely see him back in at some point on another it'll be another good fight but Essman, obviously now European champion, he's going to want to push at 35 as well. Probably last roll of the dice in terms of going for a world title. So I think 2025, that's what he needs to push at. And I'd go for the Mbenge fight. Obviously, he just beat mm. Michael McKinson. Outworked McKinson in our fight, probably. So Essman, I think him and Mbenge would be a really good fight to watch yeah, it would be a great it's a proper fan friendly fight that is mm-hmm. yeah a great one to everyone watch. won watching that fight we yeah. won as fans because it was incredible Ben Vaughan stock was risen and Eku Esman now can move on to that next level and that and Ben gave fight but promoter Ben back <laughs> at it again I, I just I just like pr- trying to put fights there yeah. like. that's the, what he does the, on Undisputed the only thing with this one Esman Vaughan that I it it was a European title on the line there should be an honorary British title just because yeah. it was such a British title fight mm. the, 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 that if you showed me that and said what what title was on the line here <laughs> seven days a week I'm saying that's a British title fight it just it was the most British title fight to ever to be and there was no British title I mean, I'm not saying we strip Harry Scarf of his belt that seems a little bit harsh but, but look at that you can even fight Harry Scarf as well maybe Harry Scarf if, and Ben Vaughan would be a good fight imagine that for him for Ben yeah yeah, it would be a really good fight. And then you've got, um, I think, uh, what's his name? Elliot Whale obviously won the Commonwealth Silver as mm. well um, oh, in, uh, in on top tier. Ball. So those are that. there's a seriously heavy hand um, when we watched him. So, yeah, another brilliant fight, another brilliant fighter. A fight that pretty much is on the complete <laughs> opposite side of the spectrum to those two we've just talked about. Ezra Taylor versus Chris Stapps. Um, what was it? Ball Mail Stars, was that what you went for Ball last May week? Stars, yeah. yeah, Ball Mail Stars. It was a good fight for 27 <laughs> seconds, and, and uh, then it was over. Was a, you was blink, a, you miss it. It was a good shot. It was. We, we literally talked like the week before as well, where the Latvians are quite tough and <laughs> can cause issues, and then you just guess well, flat. It, was, it wasn't too dissimilar to the, the first sort of this round of the Anthony um, Yard yeah. fight, is it? Yeah, um, I well, was, well, was Anthony Yard. Within 10 seconds, he was on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this guy lasted 17 seconds longer. He just, uh, so he just didn't get Taylor should it. count himself lucky that he did, couldn't get up from the shot then. Mm-hmm. Probably like Ezra Taylor is probably like it's quite a like busy sort of domestic mm. uh, division there and I think he's just sort of not quite breaking that next barrier yet so I wouldn't mind seeing him going against uh, was this Suras Meta the Yard fought like obviously Yard yeah. mm. had to go to a decision win against him so if he could go in and get a stoppage win then at least you know it's got something for him to push for them fights against the likes of Yard and saying look I stopped the person you couldn't stop so and then, yeah you can build that fight that way yeah. then yeah I like that or even Craig Richards passing of the torch yeah, moment yeah. even That's... a fight like a, like a former British champion yeah. Dan Aziz Craig Richards someone mm. like that just to sort Lyndon of Arthur maybe yeah it's, someone yeah. just to sort of push yourself into that level of being amongst like there's a lot of domestic fighters especially of that weight class there's loads of different fights you can make but yeah, just knocking on our door, I think. It's, it's got to be frustrating, that mind. You've had such a hard camp. No doubt, I'm, I'm sure he's worked really hard. He's thought, oh, you know, I'm really good at this now. I've worked, I'm better at this now. I can't wait to show you know, how great my jab is or whatever. And then you finish it in 27 seconds and you're like, well, I'm fine. But I've worked so... like You spent so many hours in the gym 
for just 27 seconds work you must feel like you've got more to show when you um, could potentially come out again by the end of the year you know the magnificent yeah. seven card in london they announced last week queensbury you could get on that potentially december 21st you know you yeah absolutely and, and while we're on the topic of future queensbury cars and i don't know what that looks like for that um uh, Magnificent Seven, who's who's going to be showing that one? But obviously, they've recently signed with DAZN. Um I believe I read somewhere. I don't know if this is necessarily entirely true, so I'm not going to say it like, with conviction. But that that TNT Sport did bid for the um, Queensbury deal, but they were just outbid by DAZN. Wow. So it's not that BT Sport have withdrew themselves from boxing coverage. But um, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Where do we stand on it? I like it. I like it when all sports are on one platform, and you know being a rugby fan you've got oh, I don't know how many subscriptions we've got we got like four subscriptions to watch our team play rugby I mean that's ridiculous but now they're all coming together on one app I mean that is really good for boxing and it can only benefit boxing and uh, I believe it starts on April 1st 2025 it's oh, it's just great you know and all the stuff that Frank Warren said about the oh, why is Eddie Hearn going on an app and all it just shows that it works and Queensbury now can put their fighters on the, on a global map everyone's going to know about them and I think it can only benefit them and and in the long run the amount of fights now that we can get I know we're getting more Queensbury against Matchroom but with them all being under the same banner they can all work together a lot better and yeah I think it only benefits the sport yeah I think I think it was inevitable and mm. it, when you've seen how well it worked for Matchroom since they moved from Sky obviously Boxer are still here but it'd be interesting to see whether Boxer stick around at Sky Sports or whether they make the jump to the zone as well or whether what will happen there if they get manage to get all the promotional companies sort of under the zone would probably be better in terms of for boxing but yeah I think it was just inevitable and like you said it would make it probably make it even easier now for the two of them to work together get the fights that the fans want to see that's the main thing really we've been treated lords over the last probably two years to fights we probably would never have thought we have seen so it's good to see the the space the box ends in at the moment and hopefully it continues uh, it's nice to see as well the zone perhaps doing better to justify their 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 whack up in prices recently yeah. um it doesn't bother me i don't pay i pay i think seven pound <laughs> a month or whatever still which i don't know how i manage but um, we still need to know how you do I don't, what was the name again i i, we, I can't say for we legal reasons i can't say it. um but you know when you look at the zone now just off the top of my head you know match room golden boy uh queensbury they've got uh the Riyadh season stuff gbm, GBM top no, tier even, misfits no. they've got no. such an array of boxing for all fans all levels you know you really can almost watch a, a disowned show every week which is I, I suppose the idea is they want pretty much a show a week i guess yeah and like even with the the small all shows it's like gonna benefit them massively like we've seen the amazing work that they do at top tier with johnny clark and like we were when we went and watched the first show we were like shocked at how someone hasn't picked those sort of shows up to show them to a wider audience and to see them on the zone that was well deserved and it'll only grow the platform of not only top tier but sort of small old boxing in the uk and hopefully get more people out to support any shows because those are the fighters that need it more than anyone else i think really yeah absolutely absolutely and i just it's it's so great to see we obviously we're nearing now a, a year since we started this podcast nearly i think next week we'll be on a year oh, and to see like we kind of came into it at this perfect time where yes. everything was blowing up and then now to see where it's come it's it's the only thing i think that's a shame about this whole queensbury thing is i really like the bt sport um team. coverage team yeah. obviously with steve bunce carl frampton um i forget the lead commentator's name but he does a lot of the football stuff in fact, actually, I was I was at Leeds on Saturday, and I was watching Newcastle Arsenal before the game, and he was on commentary for that. It's a Darren Fletcher, is it? Yeah, yeah. And then I watched the um, Leeds game, and then I got home, and then he's doing the BT Sport commentary for or TNT Sport commentary for that. I was like, how the hell has he got from <laughs> uh, Newcastle to Birmingham in in enough time to jump over? Fair play to him. Yeah, he's really good. I I really enjoy watching the TNT Sports coverage. Just Steve Bunce, I think he's brilliant. I think Richie Woodall as well is really good potentially they move over to the zone you don't know yeah. you don't know if that's if that happens because I, with the zone if you look at december 7th i think there's like three shows across one day on that it, well, it's just mental and they can't have all the same team so maybe they all come over but 
it can only benefit box in this and for the subscription that you pay i, I don't pay any seven pound 99 i think i pay like 120 quid a year now Oof. which is it's it's fine 12 quid a month for fights you know i'm definitely not gutted that i don't pay what sam pays but yeah it's only good for the sport and when you get stuff like that this happen you get more eyeballs on it more people can watch it and yeah it's really good Ni- nice way to celebrate the year of the podcast next week as well award ceremony I know. and Jake Paul and Mike Tyson yeah best fight of the year <laughs> can't wait for that one uh, the fight that everyone asked for boxing fans have been asking for for years to watch you usually was, it, was it on your bingo card Mike Tyson fighting in 2024 when we started this podcast did you ever think we would be talking about a Mike Tyson fight no no, no. no that I was, really didn't that was so gone it was like what was it 2003 his last win yeah, yeah, and now he's pretty much twenty years since he retired. So mental. fair play to him, rolling the. Uh, but uh, I've, have you, I, we'll we'll obviously go more onto this when it's. But have you seen social media posts? He seems pretty. I don't know if it's just like bravado. He seems confident. He seems. Oh, it's, it's when he when on. he flies in to wherever they're fighting, and he gets special assistance at the airport to <laughs> get him around. Then you think, oh, come I'd, on, do I'd, we really? I'd need... love to see him win. Um, sat on one everyone of those wants trolleys to see like a yeah. like a kid in the supermarket. He's everyone wants there. him to win. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. That's the thing about Jake Paul. That's how he's so smart. He's built this character that everyone wants him to lose. We're all gonna watch it, even though we disagree with it. We're all gonna watch it because there's that little possibility that something could happen. And <laughs> it's kind of the way um, Ben Whitaker built himself yeah. up, isn't it? It's kind of create this this thing that either you you hate it or you, you sorry you either you love it and you're really on board with it and you want to watch it because you love it or you hate it and you're really not on board with it and so you want to watch it because you want to watch it come to an end um but we're yet to see the jake paul train uh come to an end maybe we will i don't think we will but we'll save that for uh for another week's episode i think actually no we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do some credit to the american fights over mm. there obviously we um Mentioned Oshaki Foster, Concert Chow, I suppose, Concert Chow, Oshaki Foster, as it was Great technically fight. on the really on the fight. bill. It was a good fight. Yeah. Was Lo- a-, a lot closer than the first fight, I think. And I thought Concert Chow did better this time around. And I think that, like, the, the other fight, Oshaki Foster should have clearly won. And at least this time he got the decision. I wouldn't mind seeing a trilogy in that, because I think. But Oshaki Foster now, he can move up again. He's got his title. Exactly. He's, he's got his title exactly. that he rightly deserves. And he can go into 2025 now calling the shots and that's when you have that title that's the best thing to do in boxing do you think there's ever an issue like we were talking about earlier with judges like when a fighter loses a first fight that they like majority think that they won that they seem to get a bit of a more of a leeway with the judges in a rematch because we've seen it with Cattrall and Josh Taylor as well Cattrall won the first one comfortably the second one was a lot closer but he had a wide scorecard win on that fight as well so i think i think we're all we're all human and so in, in, judges included believe it or not and um so w- when you've got i don't know let's say 20 or thirty thousand people in the arena all would be fuming if you if you cock it up you've got millions of people online all thinking oh if you cock this up again then you're i'll remember your name <laughs> so i think i think it's only right that you maybe have a little bit in like your head. Like an unconscious bias. Like. Yeah. Well, not obviously, mm. they do their absolute best not to be, but it's impossible, I think. Especially when you've got a home fighter and the crowd's going mental. Every shot the fighter lands, that plays a massive factor and with the judge. He's like, he's then focusing even more. Yeah, I think the, the there's a little bit of biasy probably, but at least, at least this weekend, the judges, they were... They were bad in a way, but the right men won. I think that's the most yeah. important thing. The right men won, and you know, other judging. Um, when the Conor McIntosh fight, for all our Welsh listeners, for me, I had McIntosh winning, but maybe that's my Welsh bias. Say, I'm not sure we can trust you <laughs> yeah. on that one. Um, a draw was fair, I thought. Uh, maybe Madeep by one round, but. To have it, I think it was 117, 111. I thought that was way too wide. And also shout out to Ashley Johnson because she put up a very, very spirited performance against Katie Healy. Again, the judges didn't really give her enough rounds, in my opinion, but it is what it is. But it's nice to see that Welsh boxers are getting that big opportunities now that they weren't getting, what was it, before COVID, it started dying out a little bit. And then after COVID, you had Joe Cordina, Lauren Price for the Olympics and but now it seems like Welsh boxing is slowly but surely climbing back up 
because we what we got Gavin Gwynn at the end of the month. We got Taylor Bevan making his professional debut. Very excited for that. Card, yeah. We've got an incredible show next weekend with a lot of good names on it, and then we've got Ethan George against Willie Gilhaney to finish off a brilliant year for Welsh boxing. So it's in a good place, and I just think for Connor and Ashley, their stock has risen from Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that, that's the idea when you take these risks. Mm-hmm. Um, roll the dice slightly is that, that at worst you come up come out with, with your stock a little bit higher because you've well I, mean, I suppose at worst you come out worse but generally speaking if you if you take a, a difficult fight and you come out of it then then people you know have a have a certain degree of respect for that um, yeah and I, I think um, what was the other one was Gabriel Fandora yeah um, defended her belts in pretty uh, pretty good fashion what a shot really good shot I think shot. she's now the youngest female mm. undisputed champion so yeah, massive congratulations. It's it's been a year for them, hasn't it? The Fandora uh, brother and sister yeah. pairing. They've been brilliant. I just I just want to see Sebastian back out now. We've seen a lot of Gabriella this year. Let's get Sebastian back out against Aaron Spence Jr. That's a really good fight. Yeah, it was imp- it's impressive. Uh, like to the achievement mm. to be unified. What was it unified or undisputed? Undisputed, 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 world undisputed champion. I think. Yeah. Yeah, she's been very pr- impressive, a massive 2024 for her, and like obviously will be interesting to see what 2025 brings. But yeah, in terms of a brother and sister pairing, I don't think there's many like Gary Boxing, so they've achieved quite a lot this year, I think. I can't think of any actually. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any brother sister combos that are world champions yeah. at the same time. I'm sure there has been, but yeah. um, not like that a I good can. Pub quiz question. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll have to <laughs> research when we get back. Well, um, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Later in the week, we'll be back to preview Jaron Ennis, Bam Rodriguez, that show over in uh, Philly. So join us later in the week for that one. And other than that, thank you all for listening. Spotify for the audio, Instagram for shorts and reels, Twitter, etc., etc. Thank you all for listening. Catch you all next week. Punches chance. Punches chance podcast.